Hello again, and once more, welcome to our daily reflection. Now, this morning's Bible reading is taken from Matthew's Gospel, and it's from chapter 12, verses 38 to 50. Then some Pharisees and teachers of the law said to him, Teacher, we want to see a miraculous sign from you. He answered, A wicked and adulterous generation asks for a miraculous sign, but none will be given it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of a huge fish, so the Son of Man will be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh will stand up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it, for they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And now one greater than Jonah is here. The Queen of the South will rise at the judgment with this generation and condemn it, for she came from the ends of the earth to listen to Solomon's wisdom, and now one greater than Solomon is here. When an evil spirit comes out of a man, it goes through arid places seeking rest and does not find it. Then it says, I will return to the house I left. When it arrives, it finds the house unoccupied, swept clean and put in order. Then it goes and takes with it seven other spirits more wicked than itself, and they go in and live there. And the final condition of that man is worse than the first. That is how it will be with this wicked generation. While Jesus was still talking to the crowd, his mother and brothers stood outside wanting to speak to him. Someone told him, your mother and brothers are standing outside wanting to speak to you. And he replied to him, who are my mother and who are my brothers? Pointing to his disciples, he said, here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. Now, one of my abiding memories of childhood is of my mother teaching me the first verse of the child's bedtime prayer and encouraging me to use it every night before I went to sleep. Some of you may know it. It goes, Gentle Jesus, meek and mild, look upon a little child. Pity my simplicity, suffer me to come to thee. Gentle Jesus, meek and mild. Well, you know, you have to say that uh, this morning's reading is something that shows Jesus in a completely different light anything but meek and mild as he responds to a group of Jewish religious leaders who are demanding that he performs a miracle for them. And if you skip back to the verses that immediately precede today's passage, you can appreciate just why Jesus might feel that way. In one breath, these Pharisees are saying, he must be in league with the devil because he's performed a healing miracle on someone. And then in the next breath, they're asking him to do it again and perform another. Well, as we heard, Jesus was having none of it. And his response to them was nothing short of a verbal tongue lashing, branding them as wicked and adulterous generation he went on to tell them that what they needed was a complete reformation of their thoughts and their beliefs. They'd already tried many different types of reform, but none of them had lasted for very long. And their old ways, their demons, as Jesus described them, had returned and brought even more of their evil friends with them. Jesus had already urged them to repent of this and accept his kingdom way, but they'd steadfastly refused to do that. And now displays of arrogance, 
violence and even hatred had taken hold of them and were threatening to wreck everything that Jesus was doing. They were inviting disaster and Jesus made no bones about telling them that. Much of this chapter in Matthew's Gospel is taking up with accounts of how Jesus was being assailed and attacked by people who regarded him and his work as dangerous, subversive and even demonic. And in the last few verses of today's reading, we find Jesus praising his followers, the ones who are not attacking him, the ones who are discovering that when they listen to Jesus, they are brought into the presence of God and into knowing and doing his will in a whole new way. And that, of course, is the challenge for all of us as we study the Gospels, as we listen to what he says and watch what he does, are we sitting back and criticising? Are we constantly wanting to interrupt and say, now, hold on a minute, why are you saying this or doing that? Or are we learning that by listening in humility and acting in obedience, we are in fact brought into a new and lasting relationship with the one who Jesus called his father. These Bible passages that we study during this season of Advent invite us to reassess just where we are in our relationship with God. And they remind us to stay alert, keep the demons at bay and be fully prepared to be ready and stand before Jesus and welcomed by him on that day when he returns in glory. So let's end now by praying that God will help us to do just that. Father, we pray that you will make us watchful and keep us faithful as we await the coming of your Son, our Lord, that when he shall appear, he may not find us sleeping in sin, but active in his service and joyful in his praise. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, Amen.